composers are inspired by love, and that's why we have so many love songs. They're also inspired by sorrow, <laughs> and that's why we have songs about breaking up and songs about love gone wrong. Composers are also inspired by the divine, the things of God. Music born of this inspiration can be otherworldly in its beauty and its meaning. As I record this video, we are in the season of Lent. Lent is the Christian season of spiritual preparation before Easter. So in Western churches, it begins on Ash Wednesday. And during this period of Lent, this 40-day period, many Christians observe a period of fasting, repentance, moderation, self-denial, and spiritual discipline. And so the purpose of Lenten season is to set aside time for reflection on Jesus Christ, to consider his suffering and his sacrifice, his life, death, burial, and resurrection. So many composers sought to portray the moods of this season in their music. We have hymns, chants, and choral music that were created to help people prepare for the season of Lent. Now, one of the most famous pieces of choral music associated with Lent is one that I want to highlight today, and it's called Misa Rere by Gregorio Allegri. Now, Gregorio Allegri was a Roman Catholic priest. He was an Italian composer. He was also a singer, and he was born and died in Rome. And this is the piece for which he is chiefly known. Now, there's a lot that I could say about this piece, but for now, I want to tell you the most famous story concerning this composition. The story goes that in 1770, a 14-year-old boy named Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart attended a Good Friday service at the Vatican. The service ended with a piece of music that was so beautiful that the Vatican kept it a jealously guarded secret for over a century. That night, Mozart went home after hearing this beautiful piece of music, and he transcribed it from memory. In other words, he wrote down what he heard. He remembered it all, and he wrote it down and thus it gave the world one of its most iconic pieces of music ever written for the season of Lent. Now, it's kind of a fantastic story. It's possible that Mozart, maybe he did something like this, but maybe not. But nevertheless, this particular piece deserves its popularity. It's a hauntingly beautiful setting of Psalm 51. And the, the text in English says things like, Have mercy upon me, O God, after thy great mercy, according to the multitude of thy mercies, do away mine offenses. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. You can read this, of course, in the Bible in Psalm chapter 51. The psalmist here is addressing God in a hopeful tone. It's uh, David, by the way, that wrote this psalm. Addressing God in a hopeful tone, repenting of his sins, and the words evoke a sense of calm and peace. For thou desirest no sacrifice, else would I give it to thee. But thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, shalt thou not despise. Now this piece was composed during the reign of Pope Urban VIII. I think I've got that right, V-I-I-I, -I -I, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Probably during the 1630s. It was written for exclusive use in the Sistine Chapel during Tenebrae services of Holy Week. Now, Tenebrae, which is Latin for darkness, is a religious service of Western Christianity held during the three days preceding Easter characterized by a gradual extinguishing of candles and by a loud noise taking place in total darkness near the end of the service. And Misa Re Re is written for two choirs of five and four voices, respectively, and they sing alternately, and then they join to sing the ending, and it's nine parts, nine different parts, or you'd call it nine-part polyphony, like a nine-part choir. So in the video, to which I will link, you have the main choir, and then you have a four-voice, like a mini-choir, and then, or you have a solo tenor singing by himself 
up and aloft. He looks kind of lonely up there, but it's beautiful. Also, listen for the high C that is sung by the soprano in the smaller group. And the purity of her voice is astonishing. There's no vibrato, just this pure, perfectly sung high C. Thank you for watching, and I encourage you to like this video, subscribe to the channel. It helps the channel a lot. And once again, I look forward to talking to you in the next one.